Hello there, Chris here from Becker's Models and I've got a mystery package. Well, no, it's not a mystery. If you've read the thumbnail, the description below, you know what this is. Um, let's open it up without any further ado. This is going to be a first impressions video, not a build review, not a, even an inbox review. Or maybe it's an inbox review, I guess. This is going to be my sort of like, hmm, let's have a quick look at this, whatever this is. Massive bloody box for what should ostensibly be a little kit. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> oh my god, it's a tiny little box. Alright, let's spin this around. Oh, and we get the usual vouchers and so forth. So, yeah, there it is. It is a, as I'm talking off camera, Armour Hobby P51C Mark III um, 176 second scale Mustang. So here it is, it's a tiny little box, and you're probably thinking, why have I got this kit? Well, uh, if you follow or listen to any of the major uh, modelling podcasts, like Screw Cutters Union, Plastic Model Posse, uh, On The Bench, here in Australia, what they do every year is they do something called the Moosaroo Cup. It's a friendly competition where they all build one kit, and I believe last year it was some sort of Gundam or Gunpla sort of thing, and this year, for next year I should say, for 23, they were given a one of these new um, model 172 Mustangs. I'm not sure if it was this, this exact boxing. It might be the BC. I wanted to do this one. But I thought I'd, I'd tag along because uh, a lot of the members of those groups have been raving about how good a kit this is. And, you know, Armour Hobby, they're new on the scene um, out of Poland, I believe. Uh, there was a great interview with uh, Gregor or Greg, the uh, one of the, the members of the company on the Sprue Cutters Union recently, and Will Patterson of there, and also Scale Model Critique Group. He's building his at the moment uh, and having a ball. And then there's um, Matt McDougall from Dugs Models. He's also put one together. I think he's doing the F6C, the recon version. And yeah, all reports have been this is a fantastic kit, and it's been. I think the, in previous years, Armour Model 1 Model Kit of the Year for their little Hurricane as well, the 172 Hurricane. So I've been wanting to think about trying these out, but it's sort of this, this kit sort of breaks my rule. And I need to go on a bit of a rant here, and I apologise up front. If you're not familiar with my channel, not familiar with my obsession, I really like models, aircraft models done like this. In flight, spinning prop, pilot at the controls, you know, lovely not parked have i got a version of one parked okay so 99 percent of aircraft modelers will not model it the way this is described and that goes with almost every single box art out there if i was made dictator of plastic model kits i would make it a law that if you don't engineer your kit to be done exactly how it's like this then you have to have it wheels down on the box art because i reckon that's false advertising <laughs> anyway that's my obsession i like going back i don't like the old kits of you know, the 1960s, 70s, which are almost toys. You know, they had a, a, a stand, they had motorized bits and all this sort of stuff. But they looked really good. They, I love having my aircraft in flight. It's my obsession and I will keep banging that drum. So I declined to get this when this came out and I've declined to get a lot of new model kits that have come out because I've just, I'm have just i just sick and tired of modifying them. I've, I spend an inordinate amount of time having to, what people say, oh, it's only a small modification if you really have to, you know, closing the wheel wells, finding a pilot, getting making your own flight stand you know putting either jet exhaust effects or spinning that prop somehow it all adds up to a lot of bloody time and effort that i have to put in to fix a kit that i believe should have it in the first place now having said that i'm going to show you the best mustang kit there is and in fact it's one of a brace of i believe the best aircraft model kits ever made and that's the tamiya i'm gonna to have to zoom out aren't i that's the tamiya 132nd scale mustang okay now, no false advertising. You get what you see on the packet. Let's see if I can whoop, go, over, go all the way around. Do they actually have it here? No, they've got it parked. There you go. I've got the wrong boxing. <laughs> anyway, they come with a seated pilot, closed wheel well doors. The prop will spin. You have to motorize it yourself or just put an air dryer on it to, to do it. And a, and a flight stand. Beauty. And also, they just happen to be the most detailed and best engineered model kits you can get. So, can I expect the same from Armour Hobby? The reason uh, I don't think I can, one, it's not a fair comparison, is it? Before you start throwing daggers at me in the comments below, it's 172, not 132. However, and I'm going to keep complaining because that's my want until we open the box. Still haven't opened it. I need to open it and have a look inside. Um, this is a $60 plus kit. Yes, 60, 60 Australian dollars, which is about $40 American 
about 45 euro. I uh, can't remember how much it is in the old pound sterling. It's an expensive kit to get here in Australia. That's not Armour's fault. Um, I shouldn't complain about the cost of kits because this is in a very, very, very cheap hobby. But yeah, I mean, I can get that that Tamiya Mustang for about double that. I can get a good one if someone's bought it and thought, oh, I shouldn't shouldn't have got that. It's too big a project. I get that for 120. So you're saying this is only, you know, is that twice as good as this one? But the thing is, I need to buy a pilot. Okay, I need to work out how to motorize it and I need to build a stand. So pilot's at least $10. Um, getting a piece of acrylic rod, making a stand and so forth. If I can get a spare one from another kit, cost me nothing. If I have to build it, there's another five, ten dollars worth of stuff. And that's before you do anything like mast sets or decals or anything like that. So I'm pushing 70, 80 bucks for a 170 second scale kit. So you can see why I've been reluctant to get this. Well, in my own view, this is my opinion. I mean, like I said, I'm talking to you know, there's only one percent of you out there who actually follow what I do in terms of in-flight stuff, and you're thinking this is all a bunch of hooey. What are you going on about, Chris? Anyway, without further ado, I got it. I got it on special. Um, yeah, I got it down a little bit cheaper, um, and I've been able to find a pilot. I found a pilot, actually two pilots that will work. That was really hard to find, and it was a bit of a, a gamble because uh, I'll show you in a minute the. They don't really show very good photos and nobody's really, I've, I haven't actually seen one uh, painted up so I'm not sure the quality of it and the advertising quality, I'm looking at it off camera here, it was not that good if I'm honest. Anyway, let's get into it, let's open it up. So, what do we got? We got a box. There you go, it's a box. Uh, it's, yeah, nice and lovely box art and then on the back you've got two profiles, side profiles. So here's the, uh, the C without the Malcolm hood with the original one and this is the... Um, 112 squadron RAF, the GAS, the gas with the shark mouth, which I believe, I think I should know this, because I think I'm going to be doing one of my, my P-51s, uh, the D, uh, which has got the, you know, the bubble canopy and the filletless tail, I can't remember, or no, fillet tail, and that's the Australian version, but the one I'm going to do is the Polish one, I, I believe, I'm just going to do this out of the box, and that's, uh, yeah, it's the C with the Malcolm hood, which is that bubble sort of hood that they've got there. Uh, squadron leader Eugenius Horbuszewski. I should know that. My my late step grandfather was a Polish pilot in World War II. Let's open the box. What do you get? It's a side open box. Eh, first fault. All the sprues in one bag. Eh, second fault. <laughs> Let's look at the clear parts. See if they actually are intact. Um, yeah. Okay. How do I open this? Do I do a sealed one? Like I said, this is just first impressions. I've not opened this before. What's going on here? How do I open it? Oh, there it is. Is that it there? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so they use the system where they got a little bit of a stickiness. All right, let's have a look. I want to look at the clear parts first. I want to make sure that they're A, clear, and B, not crushed like my bloody border models Lancaster, which I have heard back from the, the guys who I bought it off. They have sent a note to the um, uh, to the supplier that I will be getting, hopefully we'll be getting a, a replacement set. All right, so it looks like there's both open and closed canopy options there. Like I said, I haven't even looked at the instructions, which are right here, little nice glossy booklet. There's the decal sheet, which hopefully, yeah, it looks fine, nothing's stuck. Looks like some lovely decals. First impressions, guys, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. If you want me to do a full review, that's fine, but this thing's been done to death online um, because it's been such a popular kit so we get two runners what do you want to call it and just at first glance i've got my normal reading glasses on the plastic quality looks bloody amazing excuse the french or australian that i'm speaking let's look at the little one first hey i'm going to zoom in because what's the point of looking at this if you can't see it so t for tighten let's tighten up and put that out of the way right so we get a lovely big prop which just looks fantastic. We've got some, what are these round things? I don't know what they're for. I don't know why they put them in kits. I don't need them. At least they're saggy. Uh, we've got some nice fuel tanks, nice and They're plastics, lovely and smooth. Oh, look at this. You've got the nice, uh, the vents here for the front engine. So they give you the three options, the blank plates, the louvered ones, and the drilled out. Well, they're not drilled out, but they're an impression. Ah, look at that. On the flaps, They've been riveted nicely and it almost looks like there's a stressed skin sort of effect going on or maybe it's just the way that light's catching. That's fantastic. Those rivets are so petite. Okay, we've got a control stick. We've got a lovely seat. That seat's going to... We're going to look at that seat shortly if I get enough time. 
I'm quickly filming this before I have to start dinner. <laughs> um, since I'm on holidays at the moment, I'm doing dinner duty. Now, here's the main wheel well doors. It looks like there's a, yeah, there's sink marks in them. That's okay. I'm hoping that they match up. Now, Will Patterson, he's actually done. Where are they? It's not on that sprue. If you know about Mustangs, this is the other one. They've got two sets of doors. Yeah, here they are, down here. Okay, and he actually has closed them on his. They correspond to here, either side, uh, because they do close up. The hydraulics do close them up, and he says they actually close up really nicely. So that's I'm, I'm about a third of the way there. So I'm hoping that these doors fill in nicely and unfortunately or fought and hang on no it's not molded open thank god but thank dog below so there's the tail wheel well thing okay it's the first thing i look for have they molded it with already on which is i hate it when they do that because i have to cut it off and then make my own but no they haven't it's um it's open so where's the parts to put in there because i think i'm gonna that's what i'm gonna have to scratch build let's have a look i can't find it chris where is it uh i should look at the instructions shouldn't i yeah that, that might help um, hmm, is that it there? Hmm, I might have to look at the instructions. Anyway, let's look at the wings. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm not going to spend too much more time on this. I've just, like I said, first impressions. Oh, it's a lovely plastic. Oh, it's a one-piece, one-piece wing. One-piece wings. Oh, that's really good. Nice engineering. Sprue gates are a bit chunky. Hmm, I have to be real careful with my um, sausage fingers getting them off. Ailerons aren't poseable from the looks of it. No, nope, they're fixed. That's a shame. I can cut them off, but yeah, that's that's not good enough in my opinion. You should have flying posable, posable flying services. I mean, on a premium kit like this, yeah, even the you know the tail planes, the the elevators, they're moulded in. That's a shame too. Is the rudder posable? Uh, no. All right. Well, that's a damn shame. There you get flaps, don't you? Yeah, you can pose your flaps so you can park the bloody thing down on the ground. Okay. So you can see what sort of kits. They are made for people these days, they're not made for those of us who like to pose things uh, in their element. Uh, cockpit parts look really good. The instrument panel looks a bit, looks a bit naff, looks a bit, it's got raised dials or something there. I wonder if the decals are any good. I've seen this built up inside and it looks bloody fantastic. So, you know, first impressions, it looks all right. The, it looks, it looks okay. It, I'm, I'm not blown away by that. I do like the plastic quality. I do like the panel lines, I must admit. There's a little bit of bearing or something going on oh no is that a is that an artifact there's a semicircle on the, on the on the thing here is that on the real thing that's interesting so yeah so far i'm i'm pleasantly happy ish but i know there's going to be some work involved in uh in modifying and that's where i'm going to wrap things up here because i want to show you what i've got now oh, now i can understand what they're all raving about with the engineering on the tail so that just slots in there is that the tail piece no, there's the tail. There it is. Ah, there's the fillet. I see. So you get two different types. Hmm. All right. What I'm going to have to do is this. Pilots. Motor. That's way too big. I'll just chuck that out. of. I'll have to get a micro motor. That's the one for my 132. And a rod. And again, that's too big. I'll probably have to go for a... I think that's a 7 or 8 mil. I might have to go for a 3 mil rod. Or I might even do a flat rod. Flat square rod. And I might pose the flight stand at the bump the uh what do you call it that vent at, where is it i'll get the instructions and i'll point it to you so you can see what i'm talking about and let's look at the instructions because we haven't done that yet so here we go lots of interior detail in there that looks quite good yeah there they are there's that bloody piece so i'm gonna have to modify this a23 this piece of the open wheel well doors um, that's okay, I'll just make one piece that slots in there and scribe a panel line through it. It's 172 scale, it's not that big, you know, it'll take half an hour to do, to do it right. Probably have to do it three or four times to get it right. And, um, I like to get that right perfectly underneath because unlike most models you show on, uh, well, at least on the competition stage, but even in your cabinet, nobody sees the bottom. They do on mine. Go have a look at my cabinet. You can see the bottom of all my aircraft because they're flying um yeah I'm, I'm banging that drum again apologize no i won't apologize stuff you that's what i like to do okay this looks pretty straightforward reminds me of the 132 um oh yeah there's the tail engineering there with the tail slotting over the the rudder the appanage and we've got the doors and a few other dangly things now what i'm thinking of doing you see this 
I can't remember the technical name for it. Um, the exhaust port, you know, like on the Death Star. <laughs> I don't know. But there's a there's an obvious sort of flat, rectangular sort of surface going in there, or even on the lower one. That's where I might put a acrylic rod, and I might have it curving out like that. Um, I was thinking about putting it in the tail wheel well, but it looks. Mm, I'm, I'm, I've done that one or two times before. I don't, I don't like doing that. Um, okay, so the nose is fixed, so I'm going to have to modify that to spin properly. Again, that's disappointing. Uh, you get options for open or closed canopies. I've heard that there's a bit of an issue with the front canopy here. Front canopy. Haha, <laughs> I did it again. The windscreen that you can get a step there, so I've got to be very careful when I, I won't barrel through that really quickly. Uh, we've got a nice stencil diagram. We've got the different types of fuel tanks. We've got a couple of booms. And then we get a lovely color call out. Okay. So that's one. I've never done, no, tell a lie. I've done a RAF Mustang, a 148 Tamiya, a couple of years ago with Invasion Stripes. So I'm looking forward to, and I've also done my first Mustang, uh, first 132 Mustang, my Passion Wagon. I did that with, it doesn't have full Invasion Stripes. It's got the white stripes. Um, oh, but I love that shark now. Look at that. Isn't that cool? It's tempting to do that, you know, very tempting, even though I'm going to do that again in the larger scale. Hmm. Anyway, so that's my plan. My plans are to build this alongside all the other guys. Um, I'll bring you guys, bring everyone along for the ride, but it is going to be in flight, and I want to stand out amongst the crowd who just seem to want to do everything wheels down. Now, before we go, and the battery is almost dying on my camera, let's get these PJ Productions jobbies out. There's two pilots in this set. And let's have a quick look at them because I want to see what sort of quality we've got here. So let's tighten up. Right. We in camera? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Not too bad. We've got a good pose there on that one. That one, he's got his oxygen mask on. This chap has got it off so you can see his face and he's looking out to the right. This one's looking out to the left. I zoomed in a bit too much there. All right, so these are some really nice resin pilots. See, pilots. Let's see. I'll get the, the see if I can pose him in. Yeah, it's a sort of a good fit. Sort of. I think these. Um, I'll have to really cut that piece out. In fact, bugger it. I'm going to do it live. Let's do it live. Okay, here we go. Not even on camera. I'll widen out for you. Like I said, first impressions. This is a really rough and ready sort of look. I'm very, very excited to um, get going on this, but I've got so many other projects I'd have to finish first. Um, first of which is going to be the Ghost of Kiev, and oh, obviously in the Sabre. That's a really nice fit. Can you see that? So that his back goes really nicely against the back of the seat. His bottom, though, does not. Okay, so I'm going to have to mould in, because usually, yeah, usually they... Have their parachute on their bum so i'll mold in a little bit of milliput in there just to make so that's nice and flush against the back of the seat can you see that and then hopefully his legs go up against the, the pedals for those of you who never put pilots in your uh, model kits you'll be shocked and stunned that most model kits aren't engineered properly they don't actually make them long they make they don't make the cockpit deep enough and they don't make the um you know, the, the pedals aren't in the correct position for a lot of kits. So that's why I prefer to buy a kit like this Tamiya Mustang off camera that has it already engineered for you. Because how many times I've had to give pilots ankle ectomies and cut off their legs so they won't fit, trim heads, etc, etc. It's so frustrating. So that looks, that looks like that's going to be a winner. All right, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for uh, watching my first impressions. And like I said in my recent Talking Models piece, no promises that when I'm going to start this, it might be next year. It has to be before that Mooseroo Cup's finished. I really want to get this going. I have a really, really interesting idea on how to do the display background for this. Something that I've been working on with my Porco Rosso plane off camera that I haven't shown anyone yet. So it might, yeah, see how excited I get about it. But um, anyway, thanks for listening to me rant on about in-flight stuff yet again. And until next time, cheers.